Okay, this is uh, just a quick follow-up um, from the original DIY Tandoor oven video that I put up. Um, I'm actually just in the middle of taking this one apart to move house. Uh, so while I was here I thought I would show what changes I've made to it since the first video. The biggest change which I would recommend that you definitely do if you're going to do this um, is to drill some bigger holes in the bottom pots. Now these are <coughs> 72 millimeter holes um, done with a hole saw which was uh, nasty work but it it worked. Um, I actually managed to drill it. This, this pot was cracked in half uh, at the time but I still managed to drill the holes in just by holding it together. Um, and it didn't cause any more damage. So that is that is all almost essential really. Um, I found that the the holes that come with the pot uh, originally are just too small and limit the airflow too much. On top of that I've made this contraption which I can't remember if it's in the first video or not. And that's quite a sturdy thing. It looks rubbish but it's um that suspends the coals or wood or whatever you're going to use and gives them loads of airflow from underneath and it burns really really hot. Uh, the second thing, because I kind of rebuilt this, um, the cavity around the side is now a mix of perlite and vermiculite. So the perlite is this white stuff um, there was a, I kind of did a bit of research into both materials and nobody could really decide which one to use and there was only a couple of bags left in B&Q so I just used a mixture of both. Um, the vermiculite is, it seems to get wet quite quickly and it compresses quite easily where the perlite doesn't. The perlite's quite, quite strong so I'd probably recommend perlite out of, it, out of these two materials after using them. Um, this is what it looks like in BQ if you if you need to get it. So that's vermiculite. It's like an expanded mineral. It's quite soft. And this is perlite. Is like white stones, but it's it's quite chalky. Because in the first video, I had gravel doing the job because I couldn't find uh, the Michelin or perlite. Um, gravel's a bit too heavy; it takes ages to dry out, and it seems to conduct more heat than anything. So that's out of the picture now. I'll just use the gravel around the top for um, decoration, really. You can buy vermiculite on eBay quite cheap. Um, you can buy it sort of in bulk if you want to. But I found two bags was enough to fill this really. One and a half maybe. Um, the inside pot as well, this will probably happen to yours if you make one of these. It's cracked all over, but it's basically been held together by the insulation around it. So I wouldn't worry about it. The real ones crack inside as well, so nothing to be worried about really. The top pot is also cracked but in a really nice way. It's just got a crack along here which just opens up when it gets hot so it's kind of a good indication of temperature um, and at least it's not in bits it's just give it some expansion room which is good. I think when I rebuild this one when it's relocated um, I'm going to get another one of these bigger pots and flip it upside down, cut a hole in the top and fill the cavity with more insulation and that will keep this top pot hotter and it should cook the food a bit better but as it stands with obviously a bit more insulation in uh, this cooks really well and it gets to um, about 550-600 degrees centigrade uh, and it, it, cooks, it cooks stuff really quick 
so it's still still working. I've still got it balanced on this really old knackered barbecue, which is just a, <laughs> actually I've just snapped it. Um, which I need to find a I need to find a different pedestal for it really. Uh, so I'm going to build something in a new place to take care of that. Apart from that though, it still works and it's uh, with those modifications the holes I think are essential. So um. I would definitely think twice about the first design and go straight for this one. Have fun.